Phil Collins from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. HTTP colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org. Philip David Charles Collins, born January 30th, 1951, in Chiswick, London, England, better known as Phil Collins, is a British rock pop musician. He is best known as the lead singer and drummer of progressive rock group Genesis and as a Grammy-winning solo artist. In total, Collins sang the lead vocals on eight American chart toppers between 1984 and 1989 seven as a solo artist, and one with Genesis. His singles, often dealing with lost love, ranged from the dream-heavy In the Air Tonight, the dance pop of Susudio, and the political statements of his most successful song, Another Day in Paradise. His international popularity transformed Genesis from a progressive rock group to a regular on the pop charts and an early MTV mainstay. Collins' professional career began as a drummer, first with the obscure rock group Flaming Youth, and more famously with Genesis. Although Collins supplied backing vocals for original frontman Peter Gabriel, it would not be until 1975 that he became the group's lead singer. As the decade closed, Genesis' first international hit, Follow You, Follow Me, demonstrated a drastic change from the band's early years. His concurrent solo career, heavily influenced by his personal life, brought both him and Genesis commercial success. According to Atlantic Records, Collins' total worldwide sales as a solo artist, as of 2002, were over 100 million. Collins has been known to be modest about his career as a vocalist, describing himself as a drummer who sings a bit. Section 1. Early Life and Career Collins received a toy drum for Christmas when he was five. Later, his uncle made him a makeshift kit, and as Collins grew, they followed with more complete sets bought by his parents. He practiced by playing alongside the television and radio. He never learned to read and write conventional music notation. Instead, he uses a system of his own devising. Collins looked for every opportunity to perform. His professional training began at 14, when he entered Barbara Speaks Stage School. He began a career as a child actor and model. He won his first major role as the Artful Dodger in a London production of Oliver. He appeared as an extra on The Beatles' A Hard Day's Night, although as part of a crowd scene. He also auditioned for the role of Romeo in Romeo and Juliet, 1968. Despite the beginnings of an acting career, Collins continued to gravitate toward music. During high school, he formed a band called The Real Thing, and later joined The Freehold. With The Freehold, he wrote his first song, titled Lying, Crying, Dying. Collins' first record deal came as a drummer for Flaming Youth, who released a single album, Arc 2, in 1969. A concept album inspired by the recent media attention surrounding the moon landing Arc 2 failed to make much commercial success, despite positive critical reviews. Melody Maker featured the album as Pop Album of the Month, describing it as, quote, adult music beautifully played with nice, tight harmonies, unquote. The album's main single, From Now On, failed on the radio. After a year of touring, band tensions and the lack of commercial success dissolved the group. Section 2. Genesis era, derived from the main article, Genesis, Band. In 1970, Collins answered a Melody Maker classified ad for, quote, a drummer sensitive to acoustic music and acoustic 12-string guitarist, unquote. Genesis placed the ad after having already lost three drummers over two albums. The audition occurred at the home of Peter Gabriel's parents. Prospective candidates performed tracks from the group's second album, Trespass, 1970. Collins arrived early. He listened to the other auditions and memorized the pieces before his turn. Collins won the audition, and a year later, Nursery Crime, 1971, was released. Although Collins' role would remain drummer and occasional backing vocalist for the next five years, he twice sang lead vocals on 
for Absent Friends from Nursery Crime and More Fool Me from Selling England by the Pound, 1973. In 1975, following the final tour supporting concept album The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, Gabriel left the group to pursue solo projects. Collins became lead vocalist after an unfruitful search for Gabriel's replacement. The group recruited former Yes drummer Bill Bruford and later Chester Thompson to play drums during live shows, although Collins continued to play for longer pieces. The first album with Collins as lead vocalist, 1976's A Trick of the Tale, reached the American Top 40 and climbed as high as number three on the UK tarps. Said Rolling Stone, quote, Genesis has managed to turn the possible catastrophe of Gabriel's departure into their first broad-based American success, unquote. Collins simultaneously performed in a jazz fusion group called Brand X. The band recorded their first album, the Eddie Howell Gramophone Record, with Collins as drummer. Since he put greater priority in Genesis, there were several Brand X tours and albums released without Collins. He credits Brand X as his first use of a drum machine, as well as his first use of a home 8-track. As the decades closed, Genesis began a shift from their progressive rock roots toward pop music. Although their 1978 album, And Then There Were Three, contained progressive rock influences, it also featured their first UK Top 10 and US Top 40 single, Follow You, Follow Me. In the 1980s, the group scored a string of successful albums, including Duke, 1980, Abacab, 1981, and Invisible Touch, 1986. The latter album's title track reached number one on the American Billboard charts, the only Genesis song to do so. The group received an MTV Video of the Year nomination in 1987 for Land of Confusion, another popular single from the album although ironically they lost to Gabriel's solo hit, Sledgehammer. Reviews were generally positive, with Rolling Stone's J.D. Considine stating, Every tune is carefully pruned, so that each flourish delivers not an instrumental epiphany, but a solid hook. Collins left Genesis in 1996 to focus on his solo career. The last studio album with him as the lead singer was 1991's We Can't Dance. He and Gabriel reunited with other Genesis members in 1999 to re-record Carpet Crawlers, The Carpet Crawl, for Genesis's Turn It On Again, The Hits. Recently, he discussed being open to reuniting with Genesis. Collins stated he preferred returning if Gabriel took the vocals and he performed as drummer. There are no official plans announced of a reunion. Section 3 Solo career. An early theme in Collins' music, although never specifically mentioned in his albums, involved his recent divorce. Two songs he wrote on the Genesis album Duke, 1980, Please Don't Ask, and Misunderstanding, dealt with failed relationships. With the recording of his first solo album, Face Value, in 1981, Collins attributed his divorce as his main influence. Collins' marital frustrations formed the bulk of his first solo album, as well as his sophomore effort, Hello, I Must Be Going, in 1982. With songs such as In the Air Tonight and Hello's I Don't Care Anymore, Collins' early albums had a dark presence, usually heavy on the drums. Says Collins regarding Face Value, quote, I had a wife, two children, two dogs, and the next day I didn't have anything. So a lot of these songs were written because I was going through these emotional changes." Unquote. There were occasional peppier influences. Face Values Behind the Lines, for example, was a jazzy remake of a Genesis song he co-wrote. And Hello's rendition of The Supreme's You Can't Hurry Love was a UK number one, but the overall theme was disappointment. In 1984, Collins garnered attention when he produced Philip Bailey's Chinese Wall album. He performed a duet on one of the album's tracks, Easy Lover, which went to number two on the U.S. pop chart. Collins worked with the horn section of Bailey's band, Earth, Wind, and Fire, 
later known as the Phoenix Horns, throughout the 1980s, both on solo and Genesis tracks. In 1985, Collins was invited to perform at Live Aid at both Wembley Stadium in the UK and JFK Stadium in Philadelphia, United States. He accomplished this by performing earlier in the day at Wembley as both a solo artist and alongside Sting. He then boarded the Concorde to perform his solo material and drum for Led Zeppelin and Eric Clapton in Philadelphia. His solo success, as well as his concurrent career with Genesis, influenced a 1985 cover story in Rolling Stone. Collins released his most successful album, No Jacket Required, earlier the same year. It contained the hits Susudio, One More Night, and Take Me Home. The album featured Sting and ex-bandmate Gabriel as backing vocalists. He also recorded the successful Separate Lives, a duet with Marilyn Martin, and an American number no. one for the movie White Nights. Collins had three American number no. one songs in 1985, the most of any artist that year. No Jacket Required went on to win the Grammy for Album of the Year. No Jacket Required received criticism that the album was too safe despite its upbeat reviews and commercial success. A positive review by David Fricke of Rolling Stone ended, After years on the art rock fringe, Collins has established himself firmly in the middle of the road. Perhaps he should consider testing himself and his new fans' expectations next time around. Susudio also received criticism as sounding too similar to Prince's 1999, a charge that Collins did not deny. In 1989, Collins produced another successful album, but seriously, featuring the anti-homelessness anthem Another Day in Paradise, with David Crosby on backing vocals. The song went to number one on the Billboard charts at the end of 1989, and won Collins a Grammy for Record of the Year, 1990. In the process, it became the last number one hit of the 1980s. Other songs included Something Happened on the Way to Heaven, Do You Remember, which was a U.S. release only, and I Wish It Would Rain Now, the latter featuring longtime friend Eric Clapton on guitar. Songs about apartheid and homelessness demonstrated Collins' turn to politically driven songs. This theme reoccurred in his later albums. A live album followed. Collins' record sales dropped with the 1993 release of Both Sides, a largely experimental album which, according to Collins, included songs that were, quote, becoming so personal, so private, I didn't want anyone else's input, unquote. Featuring a less studio-polished sound and fewer up-tempo songs than his previous albums, Both Sides was a significant departure. Collins used no backing musicians, performed all the vocal and instrumental parts at his home studio, and used rough vocal takes for the final product. The album was not well received on the radio. Its two biggest hits, Both Sides of the Story and the more radio-friendly Every Day, were relatively minor successes compared to the previous commercial success he had enjoyed. Around the same time, the British press had got a hold of what claimed to be a fax from Collins to his second wife telling her he wanted a divorce, although Collins has since strenuously denied this was the case. Collins attempted to return to popular music with Dance Into the Light, which Entertainment Weekly reviewed by saying that, quote, even Phil Collins must know that we all grew weary of Phil Collins, unquote. It included minor hits such as the title track and Beatles-inspired It's In Your Eyes. Although the album went gold in the U.S., it sold considerably less than his previous albums. Only the title track made a brief appearance on Collins' then forthcoming Hits collection in 1998. Despite this, its subsequent tour, A Trip Into the Light, regularly sold out arenas. In 1996, he formed the Phil Collins Big Band. As drummer, the band performed jazz renditions of Collins and Genesis hits. As Phil Collins' big band did a world tour in 1998 that included a performance at the Montreux Jazz Festival. In 1999, the group released a CD, A Hot Night in Paris, including big band versions of Invisible Touch, Susudio, and the more obscure 
the Los Endos Suite from the Progressive Era of Genesis. A Hits album released in 1998 was successful. The album's sole new track, a cover of the Cyndi Lauper hit True Colors, obtained considerable play on the adult contemporary charts before peaking at number two. Some of Collins' earlier work, for example, I Missed Again, If Leaving Me Is Easy, etc., and other successes were left off the compilation. Collins went further with his next single, You'll Be In My Heart, from the movie Tarzan in 1999. The soundtrack reached the top 10. The singles was Collins' first to enter the top 40 in five years, and Collins obtained an Oscar, although critics point to strong entries in that category by Amy Mann, Randy Newman, and the South Park movie. It was his third nomination in that songwriter's category, having been previously nominated in 1984 and 1988. His most recent studio album, 2002's Testify, failed to make much impact on the mainstream charts. Testify featured the Leo Sayer cover Can't Stop Loving You and Come With Me Lullaby. Both songs performed well on the adult contemporary charts, but the album was ignored by mainstream radio. Testify sold only 140,000 copies in the United States by year's end, although a successful worldwide tour followed despite poor album sales. Collins recently reported losing his hearing in one ear, and in 2003 announced his last solo tour. He titled the tour, First Final Farewell Tour, a tongue-in-cheek reference to the multiple farewell tours of other popular artists. Collins wanted to complete one last large-scale tour internationally before spending more time with his family. He expects to continue touring through 2006 while working with Disney on a Broadway production of Tarzan. Outside of the tour, he has only performed occasionally. He accepted an invitation to drum for the house band, celebrating Queen Elizabeth II's Golden Jubilee. He played drums for Paul McCartney, Ozzy Osbourne, and Cliff Richard. Recently, the hip-hop group Bone Thugs and Harmony recorded a remake of the song Take Me Home, titled Home, on their album Thug World Order. The song features verses by the group, with the chorus sung by Collins. Collins appeared for the music video, however, he asked the group to film in his native UK so he would not have to leave his children. Rappers Tupac Shakur and DMX have both sampled the instrumental from Phil Collins' hit song In the Air Tonight. Tupac Shakur used the beat in In the Air Tonight in his hit song Starring at the World Through My Rear View, and DMX sampled In the Air Tonight in his song Can You Feel It? No music videos of either song has ever surfaced. He married his third wife, Oriane, in 1999. The couple had two children and lived in Switzerland, overlooking Lake Geneva, before announcing their separation on March 16, 2006. Collins has said he will continue to reside in Switzerland to be near his kids. Collins also wrote the music for the Tarzan musical, which opened May 2006 on Broadway. Section 4. Films The majority of Collins' work has been through music. Four of his seven American number 1 hits come from film soundtracks and his work on Disney's Tarzan earned him an Oscar. Collins' acting career has been brief. As a child, he appeared in three films, although two of the films were for brief moments as an extra. Besides the aforementioned A Hard Day's Night in 1964, Collins also appeared as an extra in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang in 1968. His first lead role was in Calamity the Cow in 1967. He wrote and performed the title song to Against All Odds in 1984. The song became the first of his seven American number no. 1 songs and received an Academy Award nomination for Best Song. Collins was famously not invited to perform the song at that year's presentation, although he was in the audience and had arranged his tour around the telecast. It was believed that the Academy, despite nominating him, did not know who he was. A note to Collins' label from the telecast co-producer Larry Gelbart, explaining the lack of invitation, stated, quote, Thank you for your note regarding Phil Cooper. I'm afraid the spots have already been filled, unquote. Collins instead watched Anne Rankin perform his song. 
Collins performed, although did not write, Separate Lives for the film White Nights in 1985. A duet with Marilyn Martin, the single became an additional number one for Collins, as well as another nominee for Academy Award. It being the Songwriters Award, Collins was not nominated. The song had parallels to his first two albums. Writer Stephen Bishop noted that he was inspired by a failed relationship and called Separate Lives, quote, a song about anger, unquote. Collins' first film role since becoming a musician came in 1988 with Buster. His rendition of Groovy Kind of Love, originally a 1966 single by the Mindbenders, reached number one. The film also spawned the hit single Two Hearts, which he wrote in collaboration with legendary Motown singer Lamont Dozier. Movie critic Roger Ebert said the role of Buster was, quote, played with surprising effectiveness, unquote, by Collins, although the film's soundtrack proved more successful than the film. Collins' future acting work was considerably smaller than Buster, with only a starring role in 1993's Frauds. He had cameo appearances in Steven Spielberg's Hook in 1991 and, and The Band Played On in 1993. He also supplied voices to two animated features, Balto in 1995 and The Jungle Book 2 in 2003. A long-discussed but never completed pet project was a movie titled The Three Bears, originally meant to star him alongside Danny DeVito and Bob Hoskins. He often mentioned the film, but an appropriate script never materialized. Collins performed the soundtrack to the animated film Tarzan in 1999 for the Walt Disney Company. He won an Oscar for You'll Be In My Heart, which he performed at that year's telecast, as well as during a Disney-themed Super Bowl halftime. The song, also recorded in Spanish, among other languages, became his only appearance on Billboard's Hot Latin Tracks. Disney hired him in 2003 for the soundtrack to another animated feature film, Brother Bear, and had some airplay with the song Look Through My Eyes. On television, he twice hosted the Billboard Music Awards. As well, he appeared in an episode of the series Miami Vice and guest starred in several sketches with The Two Ronnies. More recently, he had a cameo appearance on the television series Whoopi. Further reading. Ray Coleman's book, Phil Collins, The Definitive Biography, published by Simon & Schuster, London, 1997. Dave Thompson's book, Turn It On Again, Peter Gabriel, Phil Collins, and Genesis, published by Backbeat Books, San Francisco, 2004. Fred Bronson's The Billboard Book of Number One Hits, published by Billboard Books, New York, 1997. Craig Rosen's The Billboard Book of Number One Albums, published by Billboard Books, New York, 1996. Audio samples from Phil Collins are available on Wikipedia as follows. Dance on a Volcano, from Genesis, A Trick of the Tale. In the Air Tonight, from Collins, Face Value. Susudio from Collins, No Jacket Required. Another Day in Paradise, from Collins, But Seriously. And Can't Stop Loving You, from Collins, Testify. Also see Phil Collins' Discography and Touring and Studio Musicians of Phil Collins. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at http colon slash slash www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl dot html.